Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartook-87. Our last episode had the party gaining the knowledge of their benefactor from the Grey Cloak ordeal and opting to meet with him. The information gained revealed that they had only a short time to get to Fort Myers to meet with Hagrid Toulouse. Their hope was that this individual could get the syndicate off their backs or at least give them information on how to clear their names. Several members of the group saw to some unfinished business with both Cabe and Karina having secret items with them. We rejoin them on day two as they outrun a large pack of orcs. I think they've given up, yelled a happy Fargus the Ranger. Froth decorated the horses and the group was riding on, and even Peepers looked fatigued. The group continued forward and successfully crossed a small creek before Lady Irena and Cabe Silvertongue confirmed that the orcs had given up using their superior elven sight. I never even saw them, pointed out a rattled Lady Irena. It's like they came out of nowhere. The group climbed down off their mounts and let their creatures drink from the creek. Each member of the party rubbed their muscles and their butts from the hard ride and Farkas the Ranger moved to a dead tree nearby and pulled out a dagger. The rest of the party grabbed some rations from their bags and congratulated their horses on a job well done eluding the orc pack. Bulger wandered over and offered the large human a snack, but he was too intent on his work. As the former sailor watched, he noticed that the human was carving out a warning on the old tree. Good idea, laddie. Those bastards will really mess up the next travelers without proper warning. With the threat in retreat, the group opted to take a longer break and make a midday meal. Fargus' handiwork with a bow had brought down a deer the day before, and the leftover flank was summarily prepared by Bulger and Lady Irena, while the others scouted out the meadow to make sure that they were not alone. A few minutes later, the group sat in a circle and consumed the rest of the well-prepared venison. The party complimented the cooks as well as the ranger for the food, but the accolades were interrupted by the large squalling of the axe beak. While everyone scanned the horizon for the threat, a large shadow passed over the group and both Sister Elaine and Fargus were struck by missile weapons from the flying predator. Large, iron-esque spikes were embedded into the ranger's shoulder and the cleric's thigh as the manacore flew overhead. The horses scattered as the flying creature swooped low and attempted to pluck at Bulger's pony. The attack would have succeeded had it not been for the quick actions of Peepers. The axe beak snapped at the low-flying beast, nicking its leg and causing it to miss its initial target. With Fargus and Sister Elaine writhing in pain, the others quickly drew their weapons as the mystical beast circled and dove at them again. Cave Silvertongue and Karina the Waif both dodged another volley of tail spikes which embedded themselves into the dirt close by. The flapping wings deafened the adventurers as they yelled out suggestions as to how to deal with it. The manticore landed near Bulger and Karina as she struggled to her feet from the spike dodging. Slashing at the pair, the manticore latched on to Bulger as Karina's weapon's strike bounded off the thick beak of the creature. Several bolts of light flew between the waif's head and the weapon hand as Lady Irena cast magic missile, striking the winged foe. The spell was enough to make sure that the creature missed the gnome, but it readied for another attack. A whizzing noise was heard as Fargus used his crossbow of speed, sending a few missiles into the midsection of the bird-like creature. Cabe had flung himself through the air and landed on the creature's back, narrowly missing getting shot by Fargus. The bard began to stab at the lion-like creature as Sister Elaine grabbed a potion of healing as she was far too damaged. Peepers entered the fray, but was kicked back by the manacore, sending the axe beak tumbling and enraging the waif. She gave out a guttural yell and plunged her weapon into the side of the flailing and injured manacore, and her aim was true. The monster lashed out against the waif and left several claw marks across her arm and neck, but the manacore had been fatally wounded. Fargus peppered two more bolts into it as it flung Cabe off, sending him sprawling into the meadow. 
More magic missiles struck the creature, but it pulled forth Karina's weapon that was still lodged in its neck. The release of the metal blade opened up the neck wound, and the creature bled out quickly, toppling over onto the prone bard who yelled out in pain. The creature flailed about, but eventually went still. The group slowly approached the dead creature, and noted that Fargus still had a spike in his shoulder. A kick to the manacore only caused Cave to yell louder. Confident that the monster was done, the group pulled it off Cave, who winced in pain as he was breathing heavily. He waved off the attention of the group as he gingerly held his ribs. Karina checked on Peepers, who seemed scratched, but no worse for wear. Sending it off to gather the horses, she scanned the horizon, confirming the orcs had not taken the opportunity to re-engage. Fargus began to bark out orders and yanked the iron spike out of his shoulder. He immediately went pale, vomited, then passed out as the blood flowed freely from the wound. The group encircled him and immediately began to render assistance to their fallen comrade. Lady Irena cradled the man's head in her lap and Sister Elaine quickly withdrew the last potion of Eileen and poured its contents into the man's mouth. A few moments later, the ranger's eyes fluttered and color returned to his cheeks. He gasped out a spicy, Thank you, causing everyone to wave their hands from the vomit smell that was being extruded from the man. Sorry, he slowly spoke but the others waved off the apology quickly. Inquiring if there were any additional threats, Karina reported to the negative and explained that she had already sent peepers out to retrieve the mounts. She then got a better look at their foe and noticed that the creature had a human head. Stunned, Lady Arena spoke up and informed her about the creature. We need to collect those tail spikes too. Alchemists use them and it would net us some coins if we might be able to trade them for something like more healing elixirs. With Fargus out of danger and Peepers corralling the mounts, the group prepared themselves to get back on the trail as time grew short for their meeting in Fort Myers. As everyone mounted their animals, no one noticed that Cabe was having a great deal of difficulty and held his ribs, exhibiting a great deal of pain. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at the Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.